Okay, so today we are going to be doing a latex slash resume guide. Now, recruiters spend about six seconds looking at your resume. So you see the top part over there, basically from my name all the way down to Microsoft. That is about everything they're going to see. So you want to fit as much information as you can over there. And yes, I do understand that the personal details take up a lot of space. And I think I might even consider removing that. But you can do that from the template. And again, this template is on a GitHub page. And you can modify it however you want. Now, the reason I'm using this template is just to show how <clears throat> you can do slightly more complicated things with LaTeX. Usually in LaTeX, you will just be using sections and chapter and subsection and a uh, begin equation. That is about all you're going to be using. But sometimes for more complex formatting, I think there's certain cool tricks that we should go over and I'm gonna be going over them today. So <clears throat> let's begin with the preamble. Now, this part is the most important part you need to know. And this is basically the spaces you see on the side. If we get rid of this line, you can see what happens. It all gets squeezed into the center. Now for a resume, I don't think that's necessarily a good idea because like I said, they will only look at the top part. Not to mention as you shorten the margins, you can basically fit more into one page. And okay, let's get into <clears throat> the first top part, which is the name part. So you put your name here and you can see the vSpace minus 0.7. Now vSpace is an extremely useful tool in LaTeX, especially when it comes to this kinds of strange formatting kinds of things. vSpace basically means vertical space. And the good thing about it is you can use negative vSpaces. What negative numbers do is it'll help bring things closer together as opposed to spreading them apart. So if I just put a new line on top instead, you can see how it's very far. But if I remove that and I use the V space instead with the minus 0.7, everything becomes closer together. And another thing I'd like to talk about is basically the edge fill. So in this entire section, you will see we have edge fill. Now, if we get rid of that, I replace it with a space, you will see what happens. All of it just gets squeezed into one part. Using edge fill, it's a really cool way of basically spreading things out and having things on other sides of the page. However, when you use edge fill, you will basically get the effect of a flush left and a flush right. Notice how things on this side are to the left-hand side and things on this side are to the right-hand side. If you want all of them to align the same way, you will have to use something else, which I will explain later. And again, you can see here, there's another V space here. Without this V space, the experience part will be way too close. So yes, sometimes you will use vSpace to increase the space between two things. Now, okay, let's begin with the experience part. Usually when it comes to resumes, experience is like the number one thing they care about, simply because it is the most relevant to the jobs. Maybe if you're in academia, they'll care about qualifications and education, but usually you should put that stuff at the bottom. And I think CCAs or whatever, I don't think anyone really cares about that once you get to a professional level. So let me explain how this formatting works. Now I have put comments here. And I have uploaded this template. And by playing around with this template, you'll pretty much understand. But generally, I have a heading here. And in LaTeX, everything is the same font size. So you have to use things like backslash large and backslash. Large to basically change the font size. I think there are about seven. The ones after this is huge and huge, one has a capital H. However, capital full caps for large is the font size we're gonna be using. Although it might actually be a better idea to just use lowercase large instead. Never mind, that is way too small. That's what she said. <laughs> Wait, no, that's an error. Whatever, you get the point. You can play around with it however you see fit. And now let's go over one of the main things we need to do. So first, we basically need to say what we did. Now. Let's say, for example, experiences. You can see the comment here, E1. Now, E1 basically means the first experience. E2 is the Microsoft part, and E3 will be the, the Freedom Software Foundation part. So let's start with what I have done here. Now, you can see there is an itemized environment. Now, itemized environments are lists in LaTeX. And part of the reason I don't like them too much on resumes is simply because they space things out way too much. So you can see how we have three items here, and we have three bullet points there. Now, in the next section, we have this new option, which is set length, item set 0 EM. And this makes it slightly closer together. As you can see, the Microsoft lists are way closer than the Apple lists. But however, as you can see down in the skills section, there's a way to get them even closer together, which is probably what you want to do for a resume. But however, using the item set might actually be a good idea because if you get them too close together, they become a little bit difficult to see. As you can see under the language section, it is a little bit hectic to read. So the way I see it is you have three options and three levels of separation. Anything more than the default separation is just gonna be way too much. So from zero EM, if I make it two, 
It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. It's way too much. You want it to be as concise as possible. And another tip I would give on resumes would be make sure you use action oriented statements. So things like I was a tutor contrasted with I conducted lessons with three to four students to help them prepare for X exam in Y subject. Usually you want to tell people what you did and any claim you make in a resume, you have to be able to prove it. There's just no point otherwise. So take for example, the software development field. As you all know, they all have their languages. And if you put all these languages, you should be able to prove it. So this is why I always say have some kind of GitHub page where you have some trial projects. At least give people who are considering hiring you something to look at aside from just claims you have made on your resume. And now we will go over how to link things. This is also another very useful thing you can do in LaTeX. Now I know you can do it in Word too, but Word is trash, right? There's something happening here. And linking things, we can use this thing called href. Now, this is the URL it links to. The this URL, I'll show you what that is. This is the URL in question. This is a good. And I am beautiful, no matter what they say. <laughs> gonna be our resume, and we want it to be the GitHub page. So this thing is the text. Now, when it comes to options, you can go up here and you can see things like URL color. This is the package that handles the referencing, whether it's to URLs or whether it's to other sections within the document or other chapters. And you can see the color part is true and the URL color is blue. Without it, without the blue, I think the default is like pink or something. And you can see we have a GitHub page and a LinkedIn page. And nowadays, I think we'll have to put more. And again, I think in modern day and age, things like the address, mobile number, and date of birth are not even relevant. So it might be a good idea to just remove that altogether. Usually people can get that information from your LinkedIn or whatever, a digital world less humanity what can I say guys technological progress be wiping away uh, the, the humans I, I, I suppose but that that's another thing now let's get into the skill section this is arguably the most I guess you could say complicated part of this entire LaTeX document because now we are using mini pages now there might be another way to do this I tried doing this with tables but the thing is I don't know how to I think this is the best way to do it and I'll explain what I've done here. So this is the title part, and this is the rule line. You can see that thick line. I'll also talk about that later. And normal size, normal font. We want to get everything back from large and bold font. And this is where the mini page begins. Now, mini pages, these two mini pages are going to be next to each other. And as you can see, they both have the same text width. And there's a horizontal space between them that separates them by two centimeters. Now, in order to get mini pages to balance, both of the mini pages have to have the exact same number of empty lines or lines in general. And to do that, we often put extra empty lines to equalize them. So you can see the text over that said, make sure both lines are the same. So I'm going to add two lines to the others section and you can see how it's going to go out of balance now. Are the same, are the same, are the same. Now, to, in order to balance this, I'm going to add two empty lines to the languages section and you can see how it balances out. If I get rid of the two empty lines, it goes out of balance again. You can also do things like new line, new line. It has the same effect. New line or two backslashes. And you can see over there I put use backslash backslash to equalize. And okay, at the bottom part is would be the education part. Usually education goes at the bottom simply because, I mean, if you're applying through a university or whatever, uh, everybody knows you're going to be in that university. If you go to your like university hiring fairs or whatever they're called. People kind of know you go to that university, so you should put education at the bottom. And another thing about education is I think only bachelor's degree and above should be mentioned here. I don't, I don't think you need to mention the 12th grade education, like whether it's A-levels or whatever kids these days be doing. And again, this resume format is on the GitHub page. And there's one other thing I'd like to highlight. In the experience, I put a vSpace of minus three. Now, in the other two, the skills and the education, I put a vSpace of minus two. Now, if we make this minus two, you can see that it seems to stretch out a little bit more. So it looks a little bit ununiform. Now, three is different to two. However, this looks a lot more precise. So I think this is, I think it has something to do with the, the text below it. So the text below it is a different font as compared to the skills in the education section. And I think that's why it gets thrown off. But however, I think 0 0.3 is the correct one. It makes it look the closest together. You can experiment with this as well. And the reason I recommend doing resumes on LaTeX is because you can get a degree of precision that's just really difficult to get on Word. Now, I think Word has a lot of templates you can use. What it is ain't exactly clear. 
And yes, I understand those templates are, I guess you could say, um, pre-formatted or good or whatever, but I would recommend doing it in LaTeX simply because you can get a certain level of cleanness that people who know what LaTeX is will just be able to tell. They can look at the document and they will just know what it is. Now, there's one other thing I want to do. This is a cool Vim thing I would like to show off. You can see all the dark lines, all the ruled lines. They are a little bit short. So what we are going to do is we're going to make them longer. Now, go into Vim mode and we are going to go into command mode. We're going to put percentage %s. Now, percentage %s means substitute the entire document. If you just put s, you only do it for the line. And again, if you highlight something and then you put s, you're going to do it for everything you highlighted. So we want to do it for the whole document. So we're going to use percentage %s backslash now 14 centimeters. Oh, that's forward slash. Sorry. That's how this is basically said syntax, stream editor syntax, same thing, but in Vim. So we're going to use it's right now it's 12 right now it's 14 cent right now it is 14 centimeters and we are going to make all instances of 14 centimeters 18 centimeters and we're going to put it back forward slash g and then we're going to press enter and then we are going to save it it's going to recompile and you can see it's a lot longer now this looks a lot better maybe we should make it 16 or 17 centimeters i'm not too sure you can play around with that um if you're using tech studio you will have to there's a man with a gun over there Yes, you will have to like pin every single one of these to use them, please. So this is how you can make a resume with LaTeX. And yes, I understand there are some formatting errors here, such as the personal details taking up way too much space. Um, usually, like I said, modern resumes, I don't think they have a top section at all. They just have the name, they have a LinkedIn page and a GitHub page. And if we do that, then yes, our resume will be within the correct formatting. I just put all of that in case. You can delete it if you want to. And another thing is, Again, make a good decision with the spacings. I think this much is too, this is too much spacing. This is also a little bit too much in my opinion. I think this is ideal, but yes, this is roughly how you make a resume. And remember, every claim on your resume has to be able to be proved, okay? Do not make like vague claims of you being a leader or whatever. Me I got to Just show stuff, just show what you can do. I think there's this thing called a car statement which you should look into. And another thing is do not put CCAs, do not put childish things, do not make it colorful or whatever. Be straightforward. You are in the adult world now, so let's behave like adult. Colors are for children. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck getting a job in today's economy. I hear that shit is a real hard. Uh, have a good one, people, and thank you for your time.